Friday, Saturday, Sunday, he's out there on the Mike Morocco, AK Rock. But uh, uh, our next guest, he's going to get to go out there and play for the first time. Dylan Wu joins us, PGA Tour player, now in his third full season on tour. He's got eight top 25 finishes last year, and he joins us down on the right to the guest line here on Fox Sports 910 Phoenix. Dylan Rock, man, what's going on, man? How you doing? Hey, how's it going? Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for jumping on. I, I want to go back. Um, to last summer when uh, you got some n national publicity by going on Fox News and you're representing the, basically a PGA Tour players with everything that was going on with, you know, the Live Tour and the merger and all that. Um, how has that all worked out now you look back six, seven months ago with the PGA Tour and the Live merger? Yeah, I mean, um, I know it's crazy. It's been six, seven months since then. Yeah. Like, Pretty much that framework agreement was supposed to happen by the end of the year. And, I mean, you guys probably know as much as we do. I mean, we're still kind of shut out from what's going on. Um, don't really know what's going to happen. But it's kind of with John Rahm going and you kind of see with just kind of the way professional golf is going. It seems like at some point that these both are going to coexist at some point in the future. So, um, yeah, there's no really any answers or how this is going to happen. Um, but there's probably going to be some type of merger in the future, uh, whether it's the PIF um, having a little more control or, say, in the PGA Tour and put pumping more money into it. But, um, yeah, I mean, you guys probably know as much as we do. Honestly, it hasn't been talked about in the past couple months. Um, honestly, with, with John Rahm going, it kind of he's just probably the second or first biggest name in golf right now. So, so and the stuff that Rory says, Rory's been saying, it's like, Something, something's going to happen in the future for, for both sides to coexist. So we'll just see what's going to happen. So for you, are you a, an old school guy, traditionalist, or you be open for a big change like this? I think you kind of have to be open. I think the one thing that Liv has done is it's kind of helped players or helped people realize the landscape of professional golf. Um, professional golf and probably professional tennis are the only sports where there, are, there isn't a guarantee. You kind of have to perform on a daily basis. Say, like any golfer who plays really well and makes the tour championship this year, you're a top 30 golfer in the world, um, but you, there's no guarantee you'll, you'll do that again next year. You have to perform versus, say, any other sport. You have a great year. Say, you win a couple times. You're one of the best players in your league or in your position. Like, you're getting a contract for five, six years that's guaranteed. And then you don't have to perform necessarily on the same on a daily basis and can, can rely on teammates versus golf. You're kind of exposed by yourself. Um, so I think it's kind of brought that guarantee and kind of, um, I mean, people love golf because it's a meritocracy and you earn every dollar. Um, that's what fans say, but living the life as a professional golfer or being, say, a, a spouse of it or a family member of it is definitely not the, not the greatest because, um, you do have to work for every dollar you make. Um, but it does make it really rewarding. So, um, no, I, I, I'm definitely a big believer that live has definitely helped change, um, in a good way, things on the PGA Tour. I think the PGA Tour was a little bit of a monopoly in their ways, and I think when you have competition, um, it definitely changes things um, from the from the past and traditional ways, and, and things can always can get better. And I think that's what kind of Liv has done a little bit, um, at least in the compensation-wise for the PGA Tour. I think with, if Liv didn't happen, I think a lot of the changes uh, on tour with purses, purses increasing, the, PI, the, the PIP, um, just basically the more money to the top players. I don't think that would have happened if Liv didn't happen. Dylan Wu, PGA Tour player, joining us here on the right tour to guest line. Dylan, speaking of the Open, what, what, what have you been warned against, or I should say, uh, what kind of skull sessions have you had with some of the other <laughs> players about the Waste Management Phoenix Open? 16. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, everybody says it's just pure chaos. Um, I mean, I'm, I've lived in Scottsdale now for over five years and this is my third year on tour starting my third year on tour it's gonna be the first time i've played it um i've played tbc scots all the time um played it with and without the stand but i mean i can tell you when i get there thursday this week or even wednesday in the pro-am or whenever i get there with the stand more people watching it's going to be a different atmosphere mm -hmm. um i played the the players last year uh for the first time and on saturday i played in the same group as aaron rye when he made a hole in one oh, this wow, was about like 3 wow. 30 in the afternoon so like that was that was probably the coolest atmosphere I was I was in when the whole was at 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 CBC Sawgrass, but the waste is like three or four times more people, and it's in a dome. So, no, I'm really pumped to 
to play in it because it'll be it'll be pretty awesome just to have that environment. I mean, the funny thing is when I first moved to Scottsdale, I was just shopping around and I told people people were just asked what I did for a living. I'm like, oh, I'm a golfer, professional golfer. He's like, oh, are you gonna go to the Open? And I'm like, <laughs> What's the Open? And I'm, they're like, the Open. I'm like, you mean the Waste Management Phoenix Open? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, and in the golfing world, we refer to the Open as like the Open Championship, but like people people everywhere in Arizona um, refer to it as the Open. Mm -hmm. I think the funny thing that people tell me is like, the Phoenix Open is basically a party with a golf tournament just happening happening to be going going on <laughs> That's at the same it. time. That's and it. I Joe. think about half half the people don't really know what, what golf is or <laughs> are just there there to party. But you know, I'm looking really forward to to playing in it for the first time and and, and being there now that I, I've lived in Scottsdale for five years. Oh, you'll have a great time, and I and I know that you will embrace it and just enjoy it uh, tremendously. My question to you is. What do you make of an amateur winning yesterday on the PGA Tour? It has not been done since 1991. And Phil Mickelson, I'm, I mean, are the younger guys coming up just that much better? Are they that good? Nick Dunlop. Nick I, Dunlop. Think they, yep. I think they are just that good. I mean, I just, even, I've, I watched literally, I wanted to watch yesterday. Um, I unfortunately missed the cut at Amex, but I literally watched the entire round. I wanted to watch him play for in the final group for 18 holes. And probably the only time I've rooted for someone to make that putt on 18 since maybe watching Tiger growing up, mm -hmm. just because the history was going to happen. Um, that was going to happen if he made the putt. And I mean, it's unreal that he won. I mean, to do it nowadays, uh, I think I always tell people, young guys nowadays, you're just, you get better prepared at an earlier age and you come out of college or even in high school, you just come out with no fear. Um, like I think that's what the things that we're taught nowadays. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm kind of an older guy technically now cause I'm 27, but still feel semi young, but those young guys like Ludwig, uh, Nick Dunlap, the, this Gordon Sargent coming up, like they just know how to play and they, they know how to rise to the occasion and they're not afraid of the moment. And I, I think that's the biggest thing, like golf nowadays, uh, better technology, better prep and better mental game preparation too. So when they are in that moment, they tell themselves like, it's just, it's just another golf shot. It's the same stuff that like Steph Curry and all the best athletes talk about staying in the moment and controlling what you can control. Like I remember learning that in college, but like before, say 15, 20 years ago, guys are learning that. Um, after our first couple of years of turning, uh, turning professional. And now people are learning that in high school or even younger. And it's, it's just crazy. Like that these guys are, um, I, it's crazy and not crazy because it's crazy how good they are at such a young age. But at the same time, it's like they're, they're given so much information and technology and they're, they can, tr they truly believe that they're good enough. And that's what you saw yesterday with Nick Dunlap. I mean, as a golf fan, it was just awesome to watch to see that happen because. I feel like golf nowadays is really, really hard compared to say 20 years ago. I think every professional sport is getting harder um, as, as we go, go on because people are getting better prepared at an earlier age and it's just more competitive. So to see that happen after since Phil did it is unreal. So no, super, pro Three. super awesome to see that. I mean, it's probably, like I said, the first time I rooted for someone to make a putt since maybe watching Tiger, mm -hmm. you know? Other times, I'm probably just watching the end just to see what happens. But no, that was an awesome moment, and I was glad I got to watch that. And kudos for him uh, to do it, to doing that. It's an awesome moment. We got a couple more minutes with Dylan Wu, who played his college golf at Northwestern, won three individual tournaments there in four years, and uh, he uh, he's been on tour for three years. You, you talk about how things have changed. How much different is it when it comes to the technology for you at the level you play? Jimmy and I, or you know, we're we're 10, 12, 13, 14 handicappers, uh, kind of in the middle of the road. But is there a big difference on, say, XYZ company comes out with a new driver in 24 to what the new driver was supposed to be the best one in 2023? Is there that much of a difference in technology? I wouldn't say there's that much of a difference now, like year by year. Two. But I think, say, you look at it from 2010 to, like, 2020, like an unreal difference in the last 10, 50, 10 years. Just like, say, the driver. The driver used to be, like, the hardest club to hit for pros. You saw videos of Rory and some other European Tour pros last week hitting an old driver and seeing how much shorter the ball goes. But, like, 
now the driver is like the most forgiving club in the bag and it goes the farthest. So like when guys are under pressure, they just hit driver Yeah. versus yeah. in the past. Like when guys are feeling pressure, they're hitting an iron or they're hitting something less. But now people are, um, are just swinging at, swinging at a driver because it's the biggest target. And I think also like there's so much more information, like say you're not spinning the golf ball enough or your ball flight's not high enough. Like you can change your shaft, your club. You don't have to change your swing. You can change your equipment, your golf ball. There's so many different ways to like help you play the game you want to play without having to change, uh, go through like a swing change, one change how you play the game. You can just change your equipment, whether that's putting, uh, this chipping or like distance control, any, everything. So like, you see people, players on a range every week. You have track bands, you have foresight. Um, like we're all, there's so much technology and data that's out there that we're learning, whether we're practicing or when we play tournaments, that you're just going to use that to help you get better. And I think that's the one thing that's been a big difference from honestly, probably 10 years ago. Um, you have shot link that shows everything. You know how far every putt, every shot, every, everything goes. Um, for a fan too, you can, you can literally see a lot of the stuff that the pros, the pro C. So I think it's just, um, overall, it's just been easier. It's, it's easier. I think golf has been easier for the pros just because there's a lot more forgiveness in the game now with, with equipment. Um, and I think that's why people are kind of scared of the, or like at least proposing the, the golf ball rollback just because some of these guys are, are hitting the ball super far. Like Nick Dunlap yesterday, that's 185 ball speed. Like 185 ball speed 10 years ago was like maybe five guys. And now you see, 40, 50 guys doing that. And that's like not unheard of. So like just equipment, is just easier, which is, which is great as a player. Cause when you're nervous and you want to hit a good shot, it's easier to hit the fairway, but, um, it just ma- makes it easier for every, every, everyone to hit good shots. So no, it's, it's definitely changed a lot. Dylan, great stuff, man. Thanks for giving us some time. We wish you the best of luck in a waste management Phoenix open. I do think you may want to, you know, you've been living here five years. I mean, we've all been here for many, many years and, uh, you may want to consider during the pro am to throw out some shirts or some hats to the crowd because <laughs> you, you can make some friends the next time you come through on Thursday. And you better know your Northwestern fight sure, song yeah. on sixteen. You better know yeah, that Northwestern know your fight, fight song, song buddy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I'm, I'm excited for it. Thanks so much for the time, Dylan. Appreciate it. It's no, Dylan, of course. Thanks, guys. Appreciate Dylan it. Wu joining us here uh, in his third season of the PGA Tour. So a uh, great kid. 27, not a kid anymore, obviously, as there are a lot of kids, as you know, we talked about Dunlop, and, and that mm-hmm. was amazing. We can get into that a little bit more. Uh, but don't forget, uh, Backspin the Golf Show, the oldest running golf show in the state of Arizona, every Saturday right here on Fox Sports 910 from 9 to 11. Coming up, Frank Sanders talks some NFL football with him next on Fox Sports 910. I'll be clear. Here's what's trending on Fox Sports 910, Phoenix. Arizona moved up four spots to ninth in the latest USA Today.